you are invited to a birthday party. I don't know about you, but I love birthday parties, and this is going to be a huge birthday party. In fact, not just the whole church is invited, the whole world is invited to this birthday party. We have so many things to do, so many things to get ready. I don't know where to begin. How about if we begin at the beginning? We're going to have a destination party. That means we all have to use our imaginations because we can't be in church together. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to be in Bethlehem together. And I bet you know a song about Bethlehem to start us out. Miss Elaine's going to play and we're all going to sing together. So sing out nice and loud, okay? In thy dark streets, dark streets. We're going to need some light, aren't we? I don't have a flashlight. Maybe some candles. What do you think about candles? They have candles at birthday parties, don't they? Oh, not that kind of candles. We have a different kind of candle here in the church, and you're going to see one light right now. That's the candle of hope that we lit the first Sunday of Advent. And we're going to light some other candles tonight. But if we're going to have a party, I think we need some music, don't you? Wasn't that a beautiful song? That's one of my favorites. The second candle that we lit tonight after the candle of hope was called the candle of peace. And now we're going to light a third candle. And everyone keeps saying to me, why is the third candle pink? You think it's because this is the birthday of a little baby girl, maybe? No. The pink candle is the candle for the Sunday that we light the joy candle because it's called Gaudete Sunday, which is a Latin word that means rejoice. Rejoice means to be not just happy, but to know in your heart that everything is going to be all right because of the baby who was born in Bethlehem. I think now you're beginning to understand whose party this is. This is the birthday party for Jesus, and that is reason for joy. So now I get to light the pink candle of joy. You know what else happens at birthday parties if your mom's there especially? She tells the story of the day you were born. So now we're going to hear the story of Jesus' birth being read. This comes from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. 
In those days, Caesar, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. The, this first enrollment occurred when Canarius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judah. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, they were, they, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in the heaven and on earth peace among those, who, whom, those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's, com let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. That is the best story I've ever heard in my entire life. I could listen to it again and again and again. And there's a song that goes with it. And if you know this one, I don't think they'd mind if you sing along. The candle that we light for the fourth Sunday of Advent is called the candle of love. God loved us so much, and that's why Jesus was born to be our Savior. And we're called to love each other in his name. But I want you to think back to that joy candle again, because there's a nice way to remember what joy means. J for Jesus, we put him first. O for others, meaning we put them second. Then Y for yourself. So if we could love Jesus first, love others second, and then love ourselves third, or love yourself to make it a why, we can remember the story every day of our lives, how Jesus came to be our Savior out of God's great love for us. Now we're going to hear a song that is just filled with joy. Let heaven and angels sing. 
uh-oh, I think we forgot something. If this is really a birthday party, there must be what? Presents. Not that kind of presence. And not even the kind of presence that they bought Jesus when he was born in Bethlehem. People traveled a long way to see him, and they brought sort of strange gifts for a baby. They brought gold. You know what gold is. They make jewelry out of it. Maybe you have a gold necklace or a ring or something like that. Frankincense, that's something that smells very, very fancy like perfume. And myrrh is something that was used when people died. They were sprinkled with myrrh when they were buried. Sort of sad, and it seems like a strange present to give a baby, doesn't it? But I'd like to know what you'd like to give the baby Jesus. If you were in Bethlehem that night, what gift would you give him? Or what gift could you give him now? We asked a few people and we got some interesting answers. Let's listen to those. I would give Jesus diapers because every baby needs diapers. I would give baby Jesus a baby Jesus toy. We would give baby Jesus toys. Please. I would give baby Jesus a ball pit because every kid wants to have a ball pit. And Penguin, he would want to give him a blanket so he can stay warm. I would give baby Jesus and his family food and water. I would Jesus I would give Jesus t um, to not die on the cross because no one deserves to die on the cross. Wow, those were some great answers, weren't they? I asked my friend Miss Emily to sing a song about gifts that we can give Jesus. I hope you all will listen to it now and listen to all the words. It's a beautiful song about what Jesus really wants from us for Christmas.
That's right. Jesus doesn't want fancy things from us. He doesn't want gold. He doesn't want diamonds or rubies or emeralds or really expensive things. He wants our hearts. And how do you give Jesus your heart? Well, you are kind to other people. Remember we said love Jesus first, others second, and yourself third? Anytime you do something very kind for another human being, you're doing something wonderful for Jesus and you're giving him your heart. It means that you pray every day, either in the morning when you get up, maybe before you eat your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner, maybe before you go to bed at night, maybe all those times and more times you can pray with your families. You can pray that God will heal people from this awful pandemic that's got us all separated right now. Maybe you can remember to bring food to church when you come for the Cockeysville Food Pantry, to bring a can of soup or some beans or something like that to feed someone who's hungry. Maybe you can just be kind to each other. That is a wonderful way to show how much you love Jesus. Now, it's getting late, and I know some of you need to get to bed because somebody else is coming tomorrow with presents. Not birthday presents for Jesus, but Christmas presents for you. I'm hoping he's going to swing by my house as well. But before we get all excited about Santa, let's sing a lullaby to the baby Jesus. I think it's one you all know. It's called Away in a Manger. Miss Elaine's going to play, and we're all going to sing together. I think I could hear you all singing, and that sounded really, really nice. I hope you will go to bed, and I hope you'll go to sleep, and I hope you'll remember tomorrow morning, even as exciting as it is when Santa's there with all the presents that you're going to be ripping open and all the wonderful things you're going to get, that you'll stop and you'll say, Happy Birthday, Jesus, because it's because of him that we get all these wonderful presents, that we get all these wonderful lights and Christmas trees, and I hope maybe if you have a little nativity set set up at home, that you'll take a few minutes with your family to gather there and together to thank God for Jesus. But first, it's time for what? Go to bed. Amen. <laughs>